Okay, so let's take a look at this problem here. And um, the original question is asking us to find out basically the nth pattern in this sequence. Um, specifically, the question says, what would be the hundredth um, value um, if we were to extend out this sequence of squares 100 times? Okay, so so that's um, that's a pretty large number. Um, so it's it we wouldn't be able to really do this by just drawing the next couple of um, sequences um, here. So we start off with, for example, um, one square, and then we expand it to be a two by two, and then this is a three by three. So the next square is going to be a four by four, and then we're going to keep going and going and going until we. Um, get to at least um, the hundredth, a hundred by a hundred, and it will ask us to calculate how many how many squares that we have, or in this actually in this case it's how many lines. All right. So the first thing we need to kind of think about is what kind of a number progression is this? Okay. So there's two types of of number sequences. There's there's number sequences that go up by the same amount every time. So here we're going from a 4 to a 12, and then a 12 to a 24. So it's going up by 8, and then it's going up by a 12. All right, so that kind of sequence is, um, is, is not the same difference every time. All right, so that's, uh, that's the first thing we need to look at. And then the other thing is that even the, um, the shape of what we're looking at here, we're looking at um, geometrical shapes which are increasing in terms of length and width. Okay, so when we have numbers that go up by the same difference every time, okay, we call that an arithmetic sequence. Okay, arithmetic just means that it's, we're just adding or subtracting the same um, difference each time. But in this case, we see that that's not what's actually happening here. And it looks like the numbers are actually growing quite quickly. So we're going from a 4 to a 12 and then to a 24. So this is an example where we're probably having here something called exponential growth. Which means that our sequence is growing by um, usually a power or an exponent. So... I would start to look at exponential um, sort of a series and an exponential function in order to try to isolate this question rather than looking at something like an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so we're just going to cross off arithmetic and we're going to look at exponential. So if we go back and we label our, we work out our, our n patterns or n, I, the idea of having the first element, second element, third element. The first element here is going to be labeled as number one. The second element here is labeled as number two. And then the second, the third element here is labeled as number four. Okay, so the first exponential value that we could try um, to see if it works is to square the value for n. Okay, so remember our top numbers here are what n is equal to. So when n is equal to, in this case, 1, here we can try squaring it and we'll do an n squared. Okay, and then when n is equal to 2, okay, that would be also an n squared. And then n is 3, that would be an n squared. So what kind of values will that give us? Well, n squared, if n is 1, that's going to give us the number 1. And then if n squared is 2, that is going to give us the number 4. And then if n squared is 3, that is going to give us the number 9. Okay, so those numbers don't look very close to what we're actually trying to get. We, we need to actually get a 4, not a 1. We need to get a 12, not a 4. And then we need to get a 24 and not a 9. So what else could we try to do here? Okay, so the next term that we could think of is, well, what about trying something like, um, you know, it's possible to do something like n cubed. Okay, so I'm just going to write n cubed down here as what our, as our new expression, because n squared didn't quite seem to work. So 1 cubed is equal to 1, um, 2 cubed is equal to 8, and then 3 cubed is equal to 27. Okay, so when we look at our numbers here, okay, we have the 1 again, 
which doesn't make us go up to a, a four. Then we have the eight and it looks like that's closer to 12. Two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight. So we're still short, but then we get three cubed, we get a 27, which is over our 24. So in one case, we're still short a number here from eight to 12. And then in another case, 27, we're over. So n cubed doesn't look like it's gonna work either. Okay, so we're gonna have to just erase those trials. Okay, and see what else we can think of here. So I wouldn't wanna go past n to the third power because that, that's, that number is very, very large exponentially at that point. So let's go back to our n squared and let's see what we could think about doing here. So the next thing I would think about, and this is just you know, coming sort of from experience, is that we will keep the squared values, but maybe let's try and double the square. So we'll square and double. Okay, so we'll try here a 2n squared in each case. Okay, so we'll square the number and then we'll double it. So in this case here, we're gonna get two times one, which is going to give us two. Okay, so it's still not four, but we're, we're getting kind of closer to it. And here we're gonna get a two times four, which is going to give us an eight. And then we're gonna get a two times nine, which is gonna give us an 18. Okay, so our numbers are getting closer. They're not over, which is good because then we're not, we're not faced with something where it's too big on one side and not, not big enough on another. But then we can start to look at, again, how far, are we, how far are we away from our values that we're looking at, at trying to get here? So I'm just gonna change colors. Okay, and we're, we're at a two right now and we have to get to a four. So I'm just gonna go, we're gonna go plus two here. And we're at an eight and we have to get to a 12. So to do that, we're just gonna go plus four. And then we're at an 18 and then we have to get to a 24. So now we're at a plus six. Okay, so this is kind of interesting because now we are going up by two, four, and six. So we're just kind of adding two every time to this. Okay, so what if we thought about this a little further and we said, well, how can I make a two from my starting value of a one? Okay, so I have my original two here, but I have to make a two here. So I can just say that could be um, two n squared, which is, gives me the first two. And then the second two is just equal to two times the value of one. So one is n. So our expression would be two times two n. Okay. And then let's see what happens with the second term here. So eight is going to be given by the two n squared. And then the four is just equal to, um, remember n is equal to two in this case. So that's a double, um, a double of uh, two, which gives us a four. So two n would appear to work there also. Okay, and then again, 18 is given to by two n squared. And then how do we get a six? Well, that's just a two times three. So that's 2n plus 2. So here's our expression, okay? This actually works right now, okay? If we double, if we square and double and then add a double of the, of the term again to it, we can generate that pattern, 4, 12, and 24, okay? So our answer to this question here, so our expression, okay, is equal to, um, we could write it a couple of ways, 2n plus, 2n squared plus 2n, or we could um, factor out a 2. Um, actually, we could factor out a 2n, and then we're going to be left with n plus 1. Okay, that would be our, our, our factored or simplified form. So the hundredth term, when n is equal to 100, the value that we're going to get in this expression is going to be 2 times 100 plus um, 100 plus 1. I'll just use the bottom expression there. So this is going to give us 200 times 100, whoops, 101. Okay, which is going to be 
I'll work that on your calculator. Um, that is going to be 202 and then add 20. So 20,020 would be the number of, of uh, would be the, the value for n is equal to 100. Okay, so this is um, sort of the way I would work, try to work out a question like this. Um, first thing you need to do is kind of uh, maybe eliminate the possibility of it just being a simple arithmetic sequence where, where we're just adding a common number every time. Okay, and the sort of the giveaway is that we're, we're doing geometrical shapes here, so that means it's probably going to be exponential. Okay, always start by just squaring a term, okay, because that's the easiest, um, that was the easiest possible way to um, figure that out. It should be an n squared there. Um, and then typically don't go higher than a square because a cube grows much faster than a square and then numbers beyond that. So that would be the first thing I would look at. And then I would look at trying to see how close that number is. And then just try a doubling um, effect on the square. Okay, and in this case, this got it fairly close. And then at that point, okay, I wouldn't try tripling it because that might make the number too big. I mean, you can try it and see what happens. But if it becomes, remember, if your number gets too big too fast and it doesn't start equaling the numbers you're, you're wanting to find, then you're, that's probably not the direction you need to go. So then at that point, see how close like the double would get and then see if there's a, if there's a difference that you can find and see if there's some sort of a pattern or a multiple to that difference. Because then once you get that, you're probably almost right there to that solution. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky. It was a little bit harder to do because it's kind of a weird expression. It's a, you square double and then you add the double of the, the term again to it. But that is sort of one way that um, you can tr hopefully maybe try and talk yourself in through this question that way. Um, it is a little bit of a, like a puzzle um, where you have to kind of figure it out and there's not necessarily just one way to attack it. Sometimes you have to try a few things and see what, where that takes you, okay?